Good day everyone! Today we are going to discuss post-harvest system and losses. We are going to discuss or go through with the different types of losses and what are the technology that could prevent these losses. Spurgeon says the post-harvest system should be thought as encompassing the delivery of a crop from the time and place of harvest to the time and place of consumption with minimum loss, maximum efficiency, and maximum return for all involved. Meaning, we have to consider a process, a method, or technology that could minimize such losses and a method that could really address and prevent the post-harvest losses. So along with this discussion, we are going to know what is post-harvest, why is post-harvest important in agriculture, and what are the causes or the impact of the post-harvest losses to the farmers, to the consumers, and to the community. And what are the steps that we can take to reduce post-harvest losses. So we're going to discuss some of the technology that can avoid or prevent these losses. The diagram shows the causes of total food loss during post-harvest chain. Some of these chain are processes involved storage, packaging, we have also transportation and other processes. We have also processing so that includes also drying. So most of the problems that we encounter on post-harvest are caused by agents. So that includes insects, that includes also humidity. High humidity results in mold growth or microbial spoilage. So these agents actually affects the quality, the quantity, and losses due to affected quality and quantity of um, our food produce affects the economics or the, um, the economic quality or the economic um, impact. There's an economic impact for such losses. So we want to prevent this. We want to prevent the agents that causes these losses. We want to prevent insect infestation and we want also to pre prevent mold growth. And some other agents are also rodents and other pests such as birds. So we want to prevent this to avoid or minimize post-harvest losses. We have various types of losses. Um, it is classified into three. So the first one is the quantitative losses. So about one third of the food produced in the world per year for human consumption is lost or wasted. If we are going to imagine how much of this food are being produced per year in, in, in the entire world, one third of that is lost or wasted. And if we are going to consider cereals, the waste is about 30%. So that includes grains, so that includes rice, corn, um, wheat. So the losses for the, the quantified losses worldwide for these cereals are about 30%. So what are the causes of um, these losses? We have late harvest. Late harvest results in attacks of pests like birds and rodents. So we have to prevent and we have to harvest, we have to prevent late, late harvest and we have to harvest our crops in an optimum time and period so that we'll be able to prevent the attacks of these pests, including birds. If drying also our commodity, especially our grains, we have to take note that the drying should be up to its maximum or optimum moisture content, meaning we have to reach a moisture that is safe for storage. If the moisture is high and if it's not safe for storage, it would allow molds to grow. Poor storage condition is also um, another cause of um, the quantitative loss because we are encouraging insects to thrive in the area. We have also allowing we are also allowing molds to grow if the area is not good for storage or if the condition is not good. So it's, uh, if we have a poor storage condition, we are allowing high humidity to come into our commodities. So we encourage actually mold growth. And of course, if the area is not clean, we are allowing rodents to thrive also in the area and other pests. So this agent such as insects, pests, and molds affects. Uh, 
um, our commodity because if the quality is affected, some of these grains or some of the co this commodity will go to waste because it is already deteriorated and it's not fit for consumption. So we have to throw it away. And, th and throwing it away or e the commodity being a waste is considered loss. Some of the people also are using defective packaging. So some of the food um, becomes waste because of spillage. And during transport, if the packaging is not good, we are allowing also the commodity to get wet during sudden rain. And spillage also if it has holes or leaks or if the packaging is not good. So this results in quantitative losses. The next loss is the qualitative losses. So the qualitative losses has um, an impact also because um, like for example molds if the quality is not good we'll be able to have a lower cost for our commodity and if the seed germination and vigor is affected so um, some of this produce are being rejected so it comes it, it will go to waste and if it's really infested um, for export if it's for export and it's really infested it would incur additional loss because of fumigation or refumigation in the area where um, in the area where it has um, arrived so um, qualitative loss has a lot of impact losses in quality are thus evidenced by a decrease in the market value of the product so meaning will not be able to demand a good price for our product because the quality is low. So some of the effects or some of the causes of um, the loss of quality of these products are the action of pests, so that includes insects and rodents, and also microbial growth or molds. And the chemical changes also produced within the grains under the effect of environmental conditions such as temperature, humidity and duration of storage if there are presence of insects and molds already in your commodity there will be also it would also enhance chemical changes these chemical changes affects the quality of your produce so you have a low quality produce and the price also will would get very low okay so, um, some of the chemical changes are also brought by high temperature and humidity and duration of storage for humidity usually it always results in mold growth or microbial contamination if we are to talk about the qualitative losses we have some of the conditions that we need to consider the first one is the physical condition of the commodity that means we have to take note that some of this condition has um, to meet a standard okay the first one is the shape and size of the grains the percentage of moisture as i've said the moisture content has to be in the safe level to prevent or inhibit mold growth and we have presence of impurities also and the degree of insect infestation if there's a lot of insects um, there's a lot of problem because um, these insects are actually feeding um, feeding um, to the grains uh, feeding with grains so they are consuming the grains and of course they have also um, some of the impurities are being caused by these insects so the quality is very much affected and um, if the commodity is also infested it encourages also microbial contamination and um, if our commodity is infested or it is already contaminated with molds and fungi or bacteria so sometimes or most of the time it would not pass a standard for human consumption so it gets rejected and of course most of the time the quality of this produce are not good so it is being rejected or you cannot demand a good price for your commodity food quality um, if we are going to talk about the quality of the food um, in terms of qualitative losses um, if there's a present of agents such as insects and molds there will be alteration of the organoleptic features okay, there will be changes um, some of that is the taste the smell the flavor and aroma okay, some of the commodity this um, the quality such as this the organoleptic 
quality is very important especially for those commodity that are um, consumed because of aroma example the coffee we have the aromatic rice so if it's if it gets affected the quality would become lower and we'll be able to have a lot of problems with that because we could not demand a better price and of course we have also food safety we have to take note that um, the presence of molds and in insects also affects the safety of the food produced molds actually is a problem because they are producing toxins um, for food safety the degree of inequity of the product or the absence of toxic products such as toxins um, is being taken seriously so some of the standards are being set um, in other countries if um, the, the produce has presence of toxins it would be um, rejected and of course chemical changes also results in changes of nutrient content so some of the nutrients are being lost if the processing is not good so that includes vitamins proteins fats and other important nutrients um, we have to take note that this nutrient content is very important for feed producers because they are looking into it so we have to take note of this and we need to prevent such losses to happen in our commodity um, in our grains during storage so um, some of the um, feed meters are being um, critical with um, the nutrient losses um, say they have to store the rice bran or the corn in a proper or a good storage to prevent um, some of these nutrients to get lost during storage for seeds also they are very critical or they are very strict with the germination and vigor so if there's insects and molds it, the germination vigor or the seed quality is very much affected the drastic change in germination because of insects and um, molds are very um, obvious or very um, it is shown in the data if the seed stock is um, infested of course with this if and if it has damage caused by insects and if it's moldy of course the vigor of the seeds are also affected so this for seeds actually it's more sensitive than other commodity um they are very strict with the storage and they are very careful not to um, allow the insects and molds to grow um, in their seeds during storage because there's a drastic effect to the quality of seeds if these agents are present and the growth rate of the seedlings are also affected because the vigor is already affected because of the insects and molds and because of this if um, if it's infested if the quality is not good um, there's a lot of anomalies in the plants and they wanted to prevent this one okay so the quantitative um, losses and the qualitative losses actually always result in economic losses economic losses is a reduction in the quantities or qualities of grain which means there's a corresponding commercial loss that is evidenced as a loss of money if you are able to if you will not able to demand a good price for the product because the quality is low that is already considered as a loss of money so it's already um, an economic loss okay of course the change or the loss of the money is due to a low quality or low quantity of the produce okay, so we have the typical range of weight loss for maize this is in sub-saharan africa so as you can see we have the percentage of the loss that they encounter according to the processes um, that they did with maize so with um drying the loss is about eight percent maximum transport is about four percent um drying we have one to two percent the field drying that is eight percent we have storage it's about five percent and we have transport to market we have two percent so if um, the cumulative loss from the production is about 10 to 23 percent so if the, the if the technology is right we'll be able to reduce these losses and we have another diagram it's a pie chart which shows the post harvest loss of oil crops at different stages actually oil crops are more sensitive than 
um, other drinks. So with storage, it's about 15%. With drying, it's about 13%. Handling and transport transportation is 18%. So how do we prevent such losses? Um, it's it's quite a big number. So we wanted to prevent these losses in commodity, in oil crops, and other um, cereals also, and other commodity. So these losses actually has an impact, especially with the farmer. If a farmer is not able to store products in complete security in existing storage buildings, he may be obliged to sell his production immediately after the harvest. If he has um, no good storage method or um, a, he doesn't have any space which he can store his produce, he will be able to sell it or he will be obliged to sell it. Of course, um, if the supply is high, um, the, the cost of the produce is also low. So after harvest, so that's becoming unable to profit by market prices when they are at best. So if the supply is very high, the price of this commodity is also low. So he could not demand a better price because the farmer doesn't have a good facility for storage or he, had a, he doesn't have a technology which will enable him to store the product and then sell it if the price is, is at its best. So this one is considered as a missing profit. So for a farmer, it is already an economic loss. So we want to address the quantitative, the qualitative, and the economic losses brought by improper technology or improper methods that is being practiced in the field. So we are going to discuss um, the drying, the storage, the transport solutions by Grain Pro um, by presenting some of the actual field installation. We have different or various technology that could prevent or minimize these losses. As you can see, we have the solar bubble dryer. So this one is installed um, in Nepal. Um, it is in collaboration with IRI. So they use the solar bubble dryer to dry, to dry um, paddy. Also, SBD is good for drying spices such as red chili pepper. So this one, the in the picture or in the image, um, it was used in India for drying RCT. For storage also, um, hermetic storage is very good for coffee and other grains as well. Um, if we are to use hermetic storage, um, we'll be able to preserve the quality, we'll be able to prevent the agents that causes the uh, post-harvest losses. That includes insects and molds and other pests. If it's sealed, actually, so the aroma is not coming out because it is gas tight. So if the rodents could not smell something, um, it would prevent them from attacking, attacking the commodity. And of course, if um, you have um, a gas tight container, so the insects are suffocating because we are elevating the level of CO2 while lowering down the oxygen level through the process of respiration. With this, we'll be able to prevent um, insect infestation and um, we are also preventing the most to grow because we are protecting the commodity from high humidity, um, especially in tropical areas. The surroundings are um, up, reaches up, up to 90 to 100%. So that encourages mold growth. So if we have a gas tank container, if we have hermetic storage, we are protecting the commodity from moisture and grass and of course we are able to protect also the commodity from insect infestation we have also um, a successful feed in installation in Djibouti in East Africa so this one is the um, yellow split piece so the insects are um, controlled um, using the hermetic technology and we have also um, a transport solution. So we have the Transafe liner. So um, it was used for transporting coffee to prevent 
humidity to come into contact with the coffee. The water activity level of the coffee is very important because it would affect the aroma and flavor of the coffee if we are exposing it to high humidity environment. Especially if um, the coffee is um, for shipment, we have problems with condensation also. So with Transafe Liner, we are preventing trans uh, condensation by preventing the coffee to come into contact with high humidity. We have also a successful storage or we have a successful um, transit or shipment of black pepper. So with black pepper, um, the humidity is also an issue. If you have a very high RH and you have a condensation, of course, the quality, the spiciness of the black pepper would be affected. So you will be able to preserve the quality of the black pepper by using gas tight or hermetic solutions. We have several studies that um, were conducted to prevent losses. Um, example is for coffee beans. This is by Dr. Borem and um, his companion. It was published 2013 and they work with coffee beans which was stored for 12 months. So with hermetic storage, they are able to preserve the quality and we have the notes that desirable desirable flavors for coffee preserved in or stored in hermetic storage was chocolatey and they are able to dis the, the um, observe also the flavors the vanilla the citrus and the red fruits and for coffee that were stored in jute sacks they were able to observe undesirable odors such as papery and jute for Coco, um, it was also a successful study because with hermetic storage or gas tank container, the weight loss was prevented, contamination with molds was also avoided, inhibited, and because we have a low, low level of oxygen, the increase of free fatty acid during storage for cocoa beans was also prevented, which means that the quality of cocoa was preserved jury storage because of a gas type container and with seeds we have several studies um, one of which is the study study conducted by iri with um several seeds or with several commodities so this one is for lentils um as you can see we have we'll be able to observe um difference in germination and um, insect count and grain, grain damage when super grain bag was used as compared to jute bag. So example, the germination was pres preserved for super grain bag um, that's from 94.7% to 94.1% um, compared to the jute bag in which a drastic drop in germination was observed. We have 93.8% to 85.3%. Okay, so we have other um, parameters that were also measured so we have insect count and we have discoloration and grain damage so as you can see if you're going to check these parameters using the hermetic storage or the grain for super grain bag we are able to preserve the seed quality by preserving its germination and we are also preventing insect infestation so with corn um, we have also studies as compared to the control stack, the control stack is just an ordinary ordinary tarpaulin. So with the control stack, um, it was observed that there was a serious insect attack. And because of these attacks, there's a loss in weight and quality of the produce. But with um, corn stored in gas tight or sealed or sealed to treated, the weight loss was um, prevented. So that's the comparison. So we have um, we have these results, which are evidences that hermetic storage and proper drying is very important to preserve the quality and to prevent qualitative losses. And in, in return, of course, um, we will be able to prevent and avoid economic losses as well. And with this technology, we are able to help farmers and other users to prevent um, possible host harvest losses. So with this technology, 
we want to reduce world hunger by protecting the commodity and reducing losses by providing our clients and the farmers and our users with an effective technology which could prevent such losses. So, if you wanted to know more about our technology, please do visit www.grainpro.com. Thank you for your time.